Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at a monitor from Asus and it's the PB278Q and the 27 kind of gives you a little hint into it because it's a 27 inch monitor but for the first time we are actually looking at a resolution that's higher than the normal HD 1920 by 1080 this is 2560 by 1440 so a big old resolution jump um, I do like it uh, round and abouts when you kind of hear people saying, oh, I'm playing on a 50-inch TV, and it's just like, well, what's the resolution? If it's 1080, you're going to be it's exactly the same as someone that's playing on a you know, 22 or a 24-inch screen with the same resolution. It's going to be no more demanding for your graphics card. The only difference is, is your pixels are going to be bigger. Now, uh, a 1920 by 1080 screen will have just over 2 million pixels. You go up to the 2560 by 1440 and you're looking at 3.6 million pixels. So if you think about that in a graphics card sense, there's almost 75% um, more pixels on this screen compared to a similar 1920 by 1080 screen. Now I have had um, 1920 by 1080 seven, 27 inch screens before and they are lovely, but I don't really want to go too much into the reviewing the kind of like the the introduction section of the video but I think what's best is what we'll do is we'll bring the camera in have a good look around like the outside of the monitor the basic features and stuff like that then I'll hook it up to the rig and we'll we'll talk about some basics and you know the gameplay one thing I will say right at the very beginning it's really easy to kind of uh, just review the monitor in itself and especially with the written review that's at Overclock 3D the links underneath the, uh, the review would have been relatively short because we would have just been reviewing the monitor. But as this is the first time we've done a 2560 by 1440 screen, what we've also done is I've tested the 7950, the 7970, the 670 and the 680 across all of our games, including three new ones because we've now added in Medal of Honor Warfighter, um, Hitman Absolution and Far Cry 3. But we've run all of the games at 1920 by 1080, which was our previous kind of, you know, um, normal setting, but we've also added in the 2560 by 1440 revolt results. So you can actually go in and directly compare the difference that you'll get from a like a normal HD um, uh, result with the larger resolution result. And I thought that was another really good way of being able to kind of show you the difference with these, because not only have we done the range of games, we've also done the four you know, kind of most popular cards really that have got half a chance of being able to handle uh, the resolution, you know, that this screen has got to uh, deliver. So just remember, that link is underneath. Uh, so if you want to go and see those results in the graphs, that's on the main website. And I would suggest you go and take a look because I'm not going to put them in the vid. We'll just do the aesthetics and my main kind of overview of thoughts in this part of the review. But anyway, without further ado, I'm going to bring the camera in and we'll have to love it. I you want to we will take a closer look. Don't start. Right then, peeps. So, basic look at the screen. Um, so we'll start at the front. Uh, we will work our way around. I'll tip it upside down and everything. But to get some of the, uh, the, the basic bits out. Obviously, maximum resolution, 2560 by 1440. Um, it's a 27-inch screen, and it's a 6.9 aspect ratio. Uh, HDMI, DisplayPort and Dual Link DVI is uh, the up to 2560 and then we've got D-Sub which is a normal 15 pin blue D-Sub that's up to 1080 if you want to use that and they're the connections that you've got available on the screen. Um, uh, it's uh, got an Asus Smart Contract Ratio which is 8 and then lots and lots and lots of zeros to 1. Look, lots of zeros. I can't even be bothered to count how many, I think it would probably be 80 million. Uh, response time is five milliseconds. Uh, just to go through some of the other kind of features, it's got um, Asus Splendid Video Preset Modes, there's five of those. Colour temperature selection, there's four modes of that. There's two 3 watt um, stereo speakers and there's 3 watt RMS. Um, you can have it so it's auto adjustment and auto brightness and all that kind of stuff if you really want it. Um, import is uh, HDMI 1.4, D-Sub, DisplayPort 1.2 and Dual Link DVI-D. Uh, audio input is 3.5mm mini jack um, and there's also a headphone jack should you want to use it as well. And then uh, just to kind of bore you with other stuff, uh, uh, power consumption typical is up to 60 watts or 0.5 watt when it's in power saving mode. Um, and it does have a visa wall mounting which is uh, 100mm square. But 
that's the boring stuff. So, um, on the base, it has got, even though it's square, it has still got, uh, uh, it's not just sliding on my desk. There is still uh, um, like a plate that you can rotate it on. Um, and you can feel, even though it does slide quite easily on my desk, you can feel when you get to the edge of it. But, uh, oh, but yeah, it does, it does rotate that. So it can still do that. And as you've seen, as I tip the screen up, it is height adjustable as well. You can slide it up, down and up. But also, when you've got it right the way up, if you tilt it a bit, what you can do is bring it right the way round. And you can have the screen um, completely vertical, should you wish. If I bring it round, you can also see down the bottom here that we've got uh, a selection of buttons and the buttons uh, power and you've got uh, um, selecting your inputs, you know, menu buttons and stuff like that. Around the back, uh, up here, is where you've got the inputs and then the power at the bottom. It's just a normal kettle lead for the power, but there's no separate switch should you want to turn it on. Now, if we turn it back round, I do suggest. Okay, so we'll look from the back. You can see that you've got the vase amount there. So if you did want to whip it off and stick it on your own stand, you've got that. If we spin it around a bit more, there's actually some writing on the left-hand side here, and it says height adjustment, and you've got 120 millimeters of height adjustment, tilt, and it all says it here, goes from minus five to plus 20 degrees. So you can go a little bit back, but then you go quite a bit forward. Swivel, it's plus um, 60 degrees to minus 60 degrees. And then the rotate is 90 degrees, front view clockwise, it says. So you've got all those kind of options there. Now, I have to admit, I'm not keen on the kind of like the, the rotate. If you had loads and loads of screens, it would obviously take up less room and you'd have, still have more real estate. But being able to slide it up and down is perfect because not all of us kind of are the same height. Not only all of us kind of sit, you know, the same. Um, I found it immensely uh, great with the screens that I use on a daily basis to be able to get them set up absolutely perfectly with me, my chair, and the way everything's set up in the desk. And let's face it, if you're going to be sat in front of this for hours upon hours upon hours gaming, even, do you know what I mean, just a small amount of difference can make it so much more comfortable for you long term, less stress on your neck, all that type of thing. Uh, it's brilliant. And let's face it, even if you do have it up a bit higher, just so that you can get like speakers or something underneath, it's completely down to you and it does give you a whole, you know, a, a, a massive you know, amount of difference so that you can choose. Um, uh, the, as far as the, the way it tilts and stuff, again, if you were to have it right the way up, you may want it tilted slightly way forward because you may want to sit slightly further down when you're gaming. It's, it is just kind of an endless option for you to be able to choose from, really. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, now we'll break off, we've kind of had a look at the screen itself. I'm going to bring the test rig in, hook it all up again so that you can see it on. I know you're only going to be able to see that the, what your screen's letting you in, obviously the difference, um, because like YouTube are going to take the, you know, a lot of the quality away from us and stuff like that, but I'll try and be, describe to you as much as I can. Um, and then we'll get things wrapped up in a conclusion. Right then, peeps, moving on to this side of uh, the review, if I just spin the old camera around. For the graphical part of the review we're going to be using the Club 3D Royal King 7950 being run at stock. Must be very clear with that, it's been run at stock. Then we've got a uh, 2011 uh, 3960X running at 4.6 gigahertz. 16 gigabyte of Corsair Dominator Platinum RAM, H100, Corsair GTX Neutron, 240 gig solid drive and a H and a H and an AX1200i power supply. Now if we move back around to the screen, what I'm going to do is turn the light off again quick. There we go. So you can see the actual screen itself better. Now at this present moment in time, we have it in 1920 by 1080 mode. But we can go on to uh, screen resolution, and we can pop that right the way up to 2560 by 1440. Hit apply. Now instantly you can see how on the screen how small everything has now got. And something I will say is straight away for me is 
kind of how much more kind of you're having to move your hand to move the mouse around. I've it got to me straight away that I was having to turn the uh, the because um, I normally run my mice with quite a low DPI setting, sort of like 800 by 800 or 1,000 by 1,000. And I found that as soon as I was starting to use this screen, I needed to personally turn it up. That's just kind of like my own thing. And also, going from this resolution, when I was uh, doing the benchmarks and stuff for the review, to then turning right and going back to my 1080p screens, it made everything on the 1080p screens look enormous. Because uh, obviously everything on this is quite compact, you get so much more in there, which is again, just to show you with the, the 2 million to 3.6 million pixel difference. So we've done that. But what I'm going to do is give you a, a graphical um, a way of seeing the difference as well. And we're going to run the uh, sleeping dog benchmark. But what I'll do is I'll get Steam opened up and get that uh, set up and then I'll cut the camera back in a second. Okay then, so we're in the options, the display options in uh, sleeping dogs. If you go down you can see we've got 1920 by 1080. If you then hit Q, it goes into the advanced options. And in here we've got everything turned up. You know, anti-aliasing's on extreme, everything that's on high that can be on high, everything that's on extreme, it's on extreme. It's basically absolutely maxed out. There's no FPS limiter or anything like that. We can't turn it up anymore. Um, if we then uh, hit Q again, it will go into a benchmark mode. And what I'll do is I'll let you watch the benchmark mode. And don't forget, it's in 1920 by 1080 at the moment. And we'll just let it cycle right the way through. And then it uh, gives us um, some results at the end that we can see. It's not the quickest of benchmarks, but at least it gives us something quite visual that you can see. I know I've not got the, uh, the speakers connected up at the moment, but it does give you something quite visual that you can see and hopefully be able to kind of gauge the difference between the two. But obviously with the results at the end, it will also give us something um, uh, concrete to be able to compare the performance difference on as well. This is actually the first time I have used the uh, Sleeping Dogs benchmark in uh, one of the videos and depending on the response from you guys I may use this uh, from now on because it is still you know, it is a, a, quite a demanding benchmark and it's something different to watch to all the, like, the future mark ones and stuff and a fair bit quicker really. I don't know why this bit in the house, it doesn't matter what settings you have it on, you do seem to, it looks like tearing on the screen, but it does it with everything. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it must be kind of part of the benchmark and it is meant to stop there as well. Something else with the benchmark as well, even though we've got everything turned up, the anti-aliasing on that bit does look quite um, basic. But anyway, let's have a look at the results. So don't forget 1920 by 1080, 60 hertz. Uh, we've got an average frames per second of 37.9, maximum of 46.5, and then a minimum of 26. So that's you can see that it's a fairly demanding game. But you can also see, if you look down at the bottom, VRAM, 30.39, uh, so th basically 3 gigabytes used all the video memory on that. But also you can see all the test results um, again. But what I'm now going to do is uh, I'm going to stop the camera quickly so I can write these results down and then I'll bring you back when we turn the resolution up. Right then, so we're back in the display options. So we're going to go down and we're going to change the resolution up kind of live right in front of you. You can see that we've gone up to 2560 by 1440 at 60 hertz. So we'll sit, hit enter so it can change. Yes, please. Right, so we're on that. So then we hit Q. We leave all the settings on exactly the same, so all we need to do is hit Q again and it starts the benchmark.
Now straight away you can see that it's not quite as fluid. You can see more of that, I want to say kind of tearing part, so that you can see that it's, it is struggling. It's definitely not as smooth and as kind of, like I said before, fluid really. Obviously, we are running this with the card at stock. That bit's you, you need to kind of keep that in mind. But the uh, the Club 3D 7950 is so ripe for overclocking; it's daft. It's almost kind of pointless buying uh, the Club 3D Royal King and then not overclocking it because the sample that I've got is immense. I know a lot of people were kind of saying it was cherry picked and stuff, but it literally was taken straight off of a retailer shelf. It wasn't picked just for me. So back to the house bit, you'll see you've still got those little kind of glitchy bits, but it's definitely this bit you can see 100% that it's, it's not anywhere near as fluid as it was before. It's definitely struggling more, a little bit more stuttery. Especially when it started to factor in the... the outside as well so right let me just write these results down so that i've got something to go by 28.1 15.8 right so we've got um an average frame per second of 23 frames per second that's down from 37.9 so you're looking at a 15 frames per second drop on the the average um, maximum has gone from 46.5 down to 28.1 uh, so with that you're looking at kind of like 17, 18 frames per second uh, and then the minimum has gone down from 26 to 15.8 so 10.2 uh, frames per second drop on the, um, uh, on the, on the minimum but as you can see as, again it's used all of the video memory up as well so this game it definitely definitely loves uh, video memory and with a, a bigger screen like this you probably are it, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt if you had more video memory, let's put it that way. But what we'll do is with that's enough, because I wanted to show you the way the screen looks and the difference that the screen has between the like the HD and the higher resolution. What we'll do now is we've, we've seen the kind of performance differences as well. So we'll now move on, get everything wrapped up in a conclusion. Right then, guys and girlies, on to the conclusion. So the screen itself... As you can see, it is a lovely screen. Asus are quite renowned for making um, really nice screens. And the, the PLS panel in this is not going to disappoint unless you're a proper kind of... Unless you've got massive pockets, this just isn't going to disappoint you. Uh, when it comes to screens, I'm not particularly like massively fussy about my screens as long as I can get it set up so I can sit in front of them for hours because obviously I, I use screens a lot and I'm always backwards and forwards that's what I'm really happy about I know some people really like like the IPS panels and stuff like that but if you're if you're not one of those kind of uh, you've got like audio files so if you're not like a, a screener file for want of a better term I can't really think about what you how you would kind of distinguish someone that's really into their screens if you're kind of an average user then this is going to be more than you'll want. You'll be immensely happy with this screen. Um, but also, the, the kind of toss-up, really, when it comes to 2560 by 1440 is you generally have one of these, or you go down the triple screen route. Now, obviously, I've been fairly fortunate enough to be able to have, you know, test and played around with both. And I've... I've oh, actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, I'll tell you the award, and then we'll... Because otherwise, otherwise, we'll get to the end of the conclusion, and I wouldn't have told you. But I'm going to give it a gold award. Anyway, so back to what I was saying about triple screens and stuff. With iFinity and uh, NVIDIA Surround, I have to admit it's never really caught on with me because when you have it set up on your desk, you, 
for me, I want to sit further back so I can see everything. Otherwise, I don't see there's a lot of point. And it's, it's all, always stuff kind of happening just at the edge of your, 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 like your peripheral vision. And I've never been 100% comfortable with it, which is why when people were saying to me with the Nürburgring, when I put that back together, where's your three screens? And it's just like, well, I don't actually like the three screens. Don't really feel a need for it. Even with my driving games and stuff, and I've got the, the extra plates to be able to put the, the extra screens around, and I've got the screens, and I specifically chose not to use them. But with this, if you've got the firepower, and you do need a lot of firepower to be able to run uh, a screen like this, because like I said, there's 75% more pixels that your, your card's having to render. And you've seen with our performance results, there's a fair old drop, and if you were to work out percentages, I mean, if you're going from 26 down to 15.8, that's like a 30% drop in your minimum frame rate. Um, and your average to go down from sort of like 40 or 38 down to 23, that's sort of like 40, 45% um, frame rate drops. Um, and 37.9, that's a lovely kind of nice fluid um, you, you could easily play it at those kind of average settings and you know going down to 26 as a minimum you're not really going to notice that too much because your average is always going to be fairly decent but to go from that you know down to kind of 23, 28 and 15s it's a fairly big drop Now, obviously you're kind of lucky with this Club 3D card and most of them that I've seen do overclock um, you know like the absolute balls out they, they, they ravage when it comes to overclocking but the point I'm trying to get is, with this would kind of be a 7950 would be, if you're going to be running intensive games, I know there's going to be people out there running the, you know, really kind of easy kind of stuff like Dirt Free and Battlefield and stuff. I mean, Dirt Free, it's just, it's still up in the hundreds of frames per second, even with a basic card on this. If you're going to be running intensive games, so like Hitman Absolution, uh, Men of Honor Warfighter, uh, Battlefield 3, um, this Far Cry, you're going to need a card, with, a card with some fairly big kahunas hanging down underneath it because uh, the frame second difference is immense. Uh, video memory as well, that's something you sincerely you know, need to kind of consider is that the fact that you've got more pixels, it's going to use more video memory and not necessarily just um, sleeping dogs but all of the games will use more video memory because it's got a lot more uh, game to kind of sit there and buffer and try and render up and everything so it will it'll ravage that so uh, at, we're going to find out later on but I'm going to be getting some cards in with more video memory in so like four gigabyte 680s and six gigabyte 7970s to test on this so that we can see how much that video difference does make it's going to be a kind of an interesting time for us now that we've got this screen on hand to be able to use going forward um, but I I would personally if someone said to me you know, a, a gaming rig, what would you get, Tom? Would it be a single 2560 by 1440 screen or three HD screens? I would be saying, without a second doubt in my mind, you'd be better off with a single one of these, if it's just for gaming. Um, obviously, I sit in front of three screens daily, as you've seen, if you've seen my, the, my setup, but I only ever use three screens for what I would call uh, workstation work. So when I'm rendering, doing my work, my emails, and I can have stuff all scattered all over the place. If it came to me that being like a dedicated rig for me, um, and I was gonna game on it, I'd probably still have three screens, probably all this size, but I'd only game on the middle one, uh, because I don't like that split, and it's a, a real pain in the bum with having to go between the profiles, between having you know one big screen and one small one. I just can't be dealing with it. Uh, but the quality of this Asus is brilliant. And it's, um, if you consider that, like the 2560s, this is probably one of the first few decent quality 2560 by 1440 screens that are available on the market. A couple of other kind of, uh, like some are available on eBay cheaper, but I'm not 100% about you know, the quality that they'll be delivering. If you, you can't you know, easily get them with a retailer, there has to be a reason for that. And I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be too keen on you know, shelling out a few hundred quid and you know, not looking very nice, it ghosting or something like that. The quality on the Asus is absolutely spot on, and I still don't think 460 quid for a screen with this, you know, this kind of like resolution size, delivering you know everything that it does is a bad price. You, you can get you know HD IPS screens that cost this much, if not more. So for a gamer, 
if you've spent kind of two grand, let's say 1500 quid, two grand on your gaming rig itself, and that's the and then you're playing it on a crappy monitor that's really not going to be you know stressing any of your parts or anything. There's not really a lot of point there. So if you go up to this, it's going to give you that reason to you know want to upgrade this, and you've got the ability to be able to wang the resolution up and really stress your rig and kind of get you know properly immersed in it. And I, I can say that the 2560 by 1440 gaming is bloody addictive as well, and it's just you're kind of sat there looking at all extra detail and seeing things that you never saw before and it does add a lot more to it it really does and it was something that me and steve had had a quite a long discussion about um just how much it was like wow that looks amazing it's just so much clearer and crisper and you, you it, it does make a lot of difference a lot a lot of difference um so if you are thinking about you know building yourself a dedicated gaming rig and something like this or even this asus was on your possibilities and you were you know kind of umming and ahhing whether you were going to go hd maybe with a you know higher quality monitor or going for a higher resolution with something more in the mainstream kind of price range for something this size because let's put it into context the, the some of the dell screens that are this size are twice this price it's it's a it's really it's actually a really good quality and real good value screen as well so that's why we gave it the oc3d global award gold award and we would say 100% wholeheartedly we would say this is definitely much more of a gamer screen um, than three individual HDs uh, you know 1920 by 1080 screens would be this is definitely the way we would prefer from our point of view we would personally prefer to play like this so hopefully that kind of explains everything you've seen the kind of performance differences between the two as well so if you are thinking about buying this please 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 remember you're going to need a card with some seriously big you know performance numbers big bollocks however you want to put it it's going to you're going to need a card to drive it i would not suggest anyone with below a 7950 or a um uh, 670 to be running this many of you out there will be saying oh i've got you know sli 7870s or you know sorry crossfire 7870s or two 660s another thing that you need to consider is if you've got those two cards you're still going to need the video memory just because two of your cards have got two gigabytes each doesn't then make a four gigabyte big card it will still only use two gigabytes in total it's kind of confusing in that respect but when it comes to the screen, it, it, you're just going to have to take my word on it before you all start arguing. If you've got two cards in there at 2 gig, it will still only use 2 gig. It's not going to start adding the two together and stuff. It, it's kind of confusing. Um, you'll see a much bigger performance boost if you've got the same amount of graphics power in one card with more video memory than two smaller cards. It may score the same on a, on a HD benchmark, but the, the single card with the more video memory available to it will score a lot better um, so that's kind of like the uh, kind of like the basic layman's terms of trying to explain it to you rather than going into all the ins and outs of why but that's just the way it works um, and also something else kind of like going into the normal ttl kind of expansion and, and we end up chatting what you'll also find because uh, i use people always seem to try and champion two smaller cards compared to one big one and it may work out cheaper and in the benchmarks it may look the same but in real world use so IRL in real life when you're trying to play the games on the two cards compared to a bigger card the two smaller cards can quite often the frames per second in the benchmarks can look as good if not better but the actual smoothness of the gameplay is so different on one of the game the tests that I did you know kind of back in the day with Crisis Warhead I think it was 560s we were running against the 580. It might have even been before that, I can't remember. But it was two smaller NVIDIA cards versus a single big NVIDIA card. And the Crisis Warhead was just, it was, it, the frames per second and the way it played didn't make sense. It was really kind of glitchy and jittery. It wasn't smooth at all. Stick the single bigger card in, which the, the two single cards, the two individual cards together in benchmarks trounced the bigger card. But you put the bigger card in and play a game on it, and it was f smooth, fine, played absolutely perfectly. And it wasn't microstarter before people start going. It was just the fact that the two cards couldn't handle everything that the game was trying to throw at it. So sometimes in benchmarks, individual cards 
teamed up look better, but in real life they don't play better. That will be the, exactly the same thing on this. If not, it, uh, it will be worse. So it may look like 2560 by 1440 benchmark results will come out quite good, but when you go in and start playing it, it will be quite jittery. So you really want to be thinking of at least one card that can play it at this rate, and then maybe even adding an extra one for more. Don't think that two smaller ones will get you through, because it, it really doesn't. I've done a couple of results with other cards, namely like, uh, yeah, I don't need to go into it, but just to test it quickly, and it did happen again. It was, it was jutter, juttery when you tried to play it. Not stupidly, but the game wasn't as fluid, and the frames per second looked good, but the actual, you know, trying to play it and getting immersed in it, you could tell that it, there was bits that it wasn't 100% about. And it was probably a uh, video memory buffer problem. Um, but it, yeah, it definitely wasn't microstutter before you are. So hopefully I've kind of got that across, that you do need to be careful when you're looking for a card to power this screen. But we've got, what have we done? Over 12 minutes in the conclusion. So we've done a classic TTL rabble. Uh, but congratulations to Asus. Uh, you can't really give this anything else but a gold award. It was on borderline going performance because it's quite an expensive screen. But I let it have the gold because I think because of everything that it does deliver you for that price, I think it's thoroughly, thoroughly worth the money. I would happily buy one of these for myself. To the point where I'm seriously thinking about actually getting my wallet out. This doesn't happen very often. And getting one of these to put on the new TNR or the Nurberg rig that's coming so I can start playing my racing games in 2560 by 1440 because I really, really do like playing games on this. Far Cry on this screen, maxed out, looks the absolute gonads. And I mean, it looks amazing. We've had it running with uh, a 684 gigabyte and it looks mind-blowing. And I do mean mind-blowing. Um, so yeah, like I said, seriously thinking about trying to get, or seriously thinking about getting another one of these for me to use personally as well. So that should be a fairly large statement for me to drop there that I like it enough to you know, want to spend my own money on it. But anyway, for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with the gold award winning Asus PB278Q review for you and all that kind of malarkey stuff out. Don't forget to hang around for the extras. Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look. <laughs> today we're going to be taking a look at the Asus PB278Q. Yes. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> and centre. <laughs> <laughs> I look like what? Sharp <laughs> so over high school years ago, did you do that centre thing? What? Yeah, because she does that. <laughs> it works, Lou really just. She goes mass! And try and be normal. How the fuck am I meant to be normal? <laughs> 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 That's my sister. She's worse than me. Complete basket case. <laughs> Work. No more crying. <laughs> Finished? <laughs> Obviously not. Done? Yes. Got it all out? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh shit! Yeah, she's done. She's still going. We've got to let it get it out because otherwise she'll start doing this halfway through me actually trying to do the review. Yeah. Done. Done? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> Look at Not me done, yeah. <laughs>